Good morning, everybody. It is 7.50 a.m. right now. Um, if you watched the last vlog that I had put up at the very end of it, I mentioned how we got a death call. And that vlog, I stopped filming on a Saturday. And the person who passed away and family coming in from out of town. So the family didn't want to actually meet until today, which is Monday. So um, I had somebody comment this on one of my videos and that's what I'm gonna try to do for this vlog is just kind of take you all through um, step by step one death call completely. Um, so we have the person in our care uh the person was was already picked up and embalmed because that was the family's wishes to um have them embalmed so basically i'm kind of taking a little bit of a slow morning i'm going to be meeting with them at 10 o'clock to go over uh the arrangements and yeah we'll see how this vlog goes if anybody ever wonders why it's sometimes oh, blah, blah, so hard for me to leave in the morning. It's this boy. It's this boy right here. He's the biggest lazy bum ever. All he does is cuddle in the morning and he just wants to sleep. And I always gotta get up and go to work. <laughs> Okay, so it's 9-11 right now in the morning. Um, like I was kind of saying, for the purpose of this blog, I'm just going to be talking about this one funeral that I'm working on. Um, so it's probably going to be over the course of a couple of days, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to talk about everything else that I have going on as well because even though i'm just talking about this one call i might get other calls um like for instance i'll talk about it a little bit right now um i have two visitations going on today and two funerals going out tomorrow morning so in the middle of me dealing with this new call that i'm trying to vlog about i do have other things going on at the funeral home so it's going to be a little bit different, but um, spanning the course of a couple different days as we kind of go through this. But I hope it gives you at least all a good idea of what what I do when I meet with a family from start to finish. Um, on Saturday when we got this death call, when I called the family to get verbal permission to pick up their loved one and to embalm, we kind of talked on the phone a little bit about the services that they thought that they wanted to have. They just kind of didn't know a time frame and certain other little details, which is why they wanted to wait for other family members who are coming in from out of town. So because I already spoke with them and I have a little bit of an idea of what they want to do, what I'm going to be doing right now before they come in at 10 o'clock is sitting down at my desk and writing up portions of the funeral contract. I don't know all the information because I don't know what casket they want, I don't know what vault they want, but I know that they want a one-day visitation and I know where they want to have the mass and the burial. So on the contract I'm going to already start going off of our general price list and writing down those figures. So when they do come in to meet with me it's going to take me less time to fill out the paperwork once they're here. It is 11.28 a.m. right now. I just got done meeting with the family. I just went out to my car because um, it's a little quieter out here. We have a couple other things going on in the funeral home, but I wanted to explain to you all what I do during the arrangement conference and why it kind of takes so long because it took an hour and a half to meet with this family. So at the time of the arrangement conference, I have to gather a lot of information that is needed for the death certificate. So I ask the person's name, address, date of birth, social security number, information that's required by the state for us to fill out. And I might do a video just solely on arrangement conferences, but I have to gather information that's needed. Then we have to actually discuss when we want to do the services. So the family that I met with today, it's a traditional funeral. So it's going to be a one day viewing of their loved one at the funeral home, followed by a funeral mass and then a burial. So. After I gathered the information, we talked about the days that they want to have the services and I helped them write up a newspaper notice. 
After that, I took them into our casket showroom and they made their selections on the caskets and the vaults that they wanted. And then they picked out their prayer cards. There's information that I need to have them, not information, there's paperwork that I need to have them sign. So then I fill out certain paperwork that's required, have them sign that and then go over the contract and the prices and everything like that. So when you go over all this information, by the time you answer all of their questions, that's why these meetings take a little bit of time. Sometimes they're shorter if we're not doing any services because we don't have to talk about um, casket selections and, and different things. Sometimes they can be longer if a family has a lot of questions. So typically, I like to set aside two hours for an arrangement conference just so I don't feel rushed uh, because you just never know how long it's going to take until the family actually gets in and you sit down with them and start answering their questions. So that is what we had just done and now the next steps are uh, we're going to call the church to make certain we give them all the information. We're going to call the cemetery to make certain that they know when we're going to do the services so that they can already dig up the grave. We have to order the casket. We have to order the vault. We have to start printing prayer cards. We have to contact the doctor so that they can sign the death certificate and we can file that so we can get our burial transit permit. And we have to start working on our staffing. So we'll have to start uh, calling our workers for the visitation and the funeral service and do the newspaper. We gotta get that in the paper so we have a deadline uh, for that as well. So right now there's just gonna be a lot of phone calls that we're gonna be making so we can organize everything. It is 12.26 p.m. and between Keith and I, so far we've ordered the casket, we've ordered the vault, we've talked to the church, submitted the newspaper notice, called the cemetery, did our funeral home website, we have organized our funeral staff for the visitation and the funeral. Um, we still have to contact the doctor about the death certificate and worry about filing that. We have to contact military honors because this person is a veteran. And we have to print up some prayer cards. And so far it looks like that's basically that. So for the paperwork purposes of everything, we are in a really good shape and we were able to do almost everything um, within an hour. So, yeah. Hi everybody, it is 8.54 a.m. right now on Wednesday. I realized that I did not vlog at all yesterday about this call and that's because after a funeral service that we had in the morning, I wasn't feeling super good, so I actually went home. So I just kind of want to update you all on what had happened and kind of tell you where we are right now. So yesterday, Keith and our embalmer actually got this deceased ready for the visitation a day ahead of time. So they put them in the casket, they dressed them, and they did cosmetics on them. So that's one nice thing about having people that you work with that you trust because I trust Keith completely. I know that I don't have to be at the funeral home and he's going to take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. So it's really nice to be able to have coworkers that you can depend on because there are times when you just can't do it all yourself so I got into the funeral home earlier this morning what I'm gonna do right now is just check on the deceased to make certain that they don't need any makeup updates um, to make certain that they're not discoloring or purging or things like that it's all natural I know like a lot of people don't like to hear about this but even if a person's embalmed you still have to check on them to make certain that um, nothing funky is happening because people don't want to see that when they come in to view their loved one. Um, it's all natural, part of, you know, our body shutting down, but family members don't want to see, you know, their mom or dad with a little purge coming out. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'll check on the deceased and if they need any sort of cosmetic updates or anything like that, I'll do it. Uh, the visitation today is from 3 to 7, the family decided on, so they'll be in at 2 o'clock because we always ask that a family comes an hour ahead of the visitation so they can have an hour of private time 
And then also, if they want to bring in pictures, poster boards, mementos to put into the casket, it gives us enough time to help them set those items up, um, any items that they didn't bring in with them at the actual arrangement conference. So that is what I'm going to be doing right now, is just checking on, on the person to make certain that I have everything set for them. And then what will happen is a little bit before to p.m. I will check on them again. I'll probably honestly normally I like check in on them every hour <laughs> um, before the visitation but I'll at least check on them that one more time before the family walks in so I'll keep you all updated okay it is 10 59 a.m. Keith is behind me but he says he doesn't want to be in this vlog update but anyways I just looked at the calendar obviously for like the first time apparently and it seems that at two o'clock I actually have a prearranged map so Keith will probably be meeting the family when they come in for the visitation, right? Yes, I have to. <laughs> Keith, are you in a bad mood again? I Don't be in a bad mood the second always... vlog. So anyways, Keith apparently is in a bad mood again. So this is vlog number two that he's in a bad mood. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> It's 11.23 a.m. right now and I'm currently setting up flowers for the visitation. Okay, so I just set some up, so I'm sitting down for a second. Um, when I set up flowers, there, hold on, this music is really loud. Hold on. Maybe it's not, maybe my phone's not picking it up, but still, it was really loud. Um, so when I set up flowers for a visitation, there's like all different kinds of mindsets to setting up flowers. Some people just put them up when they come in but what I like to do and this is how I was taught um, at the first funeral home that I worked at the family pieces like you you set those up closest to the casket so like um, spouse or um, like father mother grandfather grandmother like the immediate family pieces are going to be the ones that are going to be closest to the casket or closest to the urn and then you kind of move out from there so brother-in-law sister-in-law aunt uncle cousins like the family then um, family pieces are still close but they it depends on like what family member sends them I also try to set up flowers by color so um, if like there's a red flower and white flower piece together and then there's like a white like pink you know you kind of try to connect the colors so it kind of all blends together so it's not like you just threw a flower piece up there I like to put <laughs> people make fun of me for it here I put a lot of thought into how I set up the flowers I'm very like particular about it but I think that it matters I think that when everything looks cohesive and everything looks like they go together families can just tell that you put a little bit more time into it so um, flowers are always a work in progress because florists deliver them at all different times before the visitations will start so that's something that annoys me <laughs> is I'll have the flowers like all set up and they look awesome and then like a half an hour before the visitation starts I'll get like three more pieces in and then I'll have to redo everything which sometimes I think to myself why don't I just wait until right before the visitation starts but you never know how things are going to go over here we could get really busy really quickly so I try to set things up as we go along and if I need to tweak things in between I do 1.41 p.m. right now. I just did what I think will be my last check on the deceased. Uh, their makeup looks really good. Everything with their outfit is nice and neat. I did get additional flowers in, so I set those up as well. So basically now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait for the family to come in. And when the family comes in, any sort of like pictures, poster boards, mementos, whatever they bring in will help them set up around the room. And we'll make certain that they don't want us to do any sort of cosmetic adjustments to their loved one. We'll make certain that they're just in and situated and settled. And if everything is good, then basically we leave them alone for the majority of the visitation. We check in to make certain that we replenish the prayer cards, make certain that we have like envelopes for monetary donations set up by the register book. If the book needs additional pages, we'll keep an eye on that and set it up as well. But we try to kind of leave families alone for the calling hours. Um, we're always in the building, but we don't like to really hover or like bombard them with our presence because it's really supposed to be their time with their family and their loved ones so we're around to make certain that everything runs smooth but we kind of stay you know in the background a lot for these things 
Hi everybody, it is 7.41 a.m. right now on Thursday. <laughs> I think that this is one of the hardest things about like being a funeral director is you kind of don't know what days are what days because a lot of times you don't have days off. Well, at least I don't have days off, so it's not like I can keep track of... I, I'm constantly looking at my calendar, let me put it that way. But yes, um, I am on my way to... Uh, go get my car washed and then I'm gonna head over to the funeral home because we have the funeral this morning for our deceased so uh, I'll keep you all updated 752 guess where I am in the car wash I kind of like the uh, the lights <laughs> when I film me in the car wash I discovered that in my last vlog but um, I'm kind of running just like a little bit later than I would have liked to, but I have to get my car washed, I have to get gas, which I'm at the same place for that, and then after I am going to still get a coffee from Tim Hortons, because even if I'm running late, I need my coffee. It's 8.08 a.m. It's really bright outside. Walking into the funeral home now, gonna check on the deceased. We need to do any cosmetics updates, we will. We'll check the car list, we'll go outside, we'll park cars, we'll say prayers. Same old, same old. It's 8.40 a.m. right now. I came back out to my car because I realized that I forgot my sport coat. It's in my car. Um, and I'm just sitting here right now drinking coffee because family hasn't arrived to the funeral home yet and everybody's inside and I'm just really tired today. <laughs> Like I said, I'm kind of tired all the time, um, but it's kind of nice because I'm just taking a couple of minutes for myself this morning before everything starts on this funeral. Uh, the workers, the guys, they're all inside right now, and I'm just in the parking lot in my car drinking my coffee, um, and I can see our uh, driveways, so if like somebody were to pull into the driveway, I could get out and park their car, but I'm going to get out in a second and start working, I swear. It's 10, 12 a.m. I'm just eating a breakfast sandwich. Not a breakfast sandwich, a breakfast bar. Um, <laughs> we got the family into the church. It's another Catholic mass. It really, um, at the funeral home where I work, we do a ton of services for people of the Catholic faith, which I really like, and the reason being is because a Catholic Mass is very predictable with um, the time frame that they're doing. So basically, I'm just sitting in my car right now outside of the church, and um, I know that I have a good hour uh, before I have to go in and do anything additional. I'm just sitting out here for a minute because um, there's no air conditioner in the church, but there is in my car. So uh, what'll happen? What'll do? what I will do is finish eating because that's what like I always do is just eat and um or drink coffee you know and then after that I'll go back into the church and I'll just kind of sit in the back and watch everything in case something happens and I need to be there but I have uh, my hearse driver in there right now so he is keeping an eye on things as well and after the mass we will ride in procession to the cemetery we'll say final prayers over there and then we'll have the burial Another update. Okay, so um, I'm actually leaving the church right now just very quickly because the family did say that they want to pass by the house because it's right down the road from the church. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the house just to make certain I know what one it is. So on our way to the cemetery, I'll be able to stop in front of it one last time. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why I like to drive past the house before I'm doing it on a funeral procession because I just drove back and forth where this house was supposed to be about three times and I could not find this house number. So I pulled off to the side and I looked at my notes and I was confusing two of the numbers. So the house I thought I was looking for doesn't exist and then I was able to actually look at the number. So let's try this again, right? It is 12.03 right now. I just got back to the church because I dropped the priest off. So what happens on a funeral service typically is when we leave the church and when we go to the cemetery, like the priest or the minister will typically drive with me. Although, fun fact, I have had a few Christian ministers 
who refuse to drive with me because I'm a woman and um, I had a friend of mine who uh, told me that a lot of the times they won't um, not because I'm a woman per se but because uh, they don't want to put themselves in like a like a weird situation you know what I mean at least that's what he told me I don't know he could be lying um, but normally like if you do a Catholic mass the Catholic priest they will drive with me to the cemetery just so they don't have to take their own car and that's what happened this time so the priest came in um, we drove by the deceased house we went to the cemetery the priest said the final prayers and then we had military honors because this person was a veteran. So the military played taps, they did a flag folding, and then they did a flag presentation. So after that, the prayers were said in the chapel at the cemetery. We went over to the gravesite where the family followed and they witnessed the burial of their loved one. And then I took the priest back to the church. That's where we are now. So um, that was kind of this funeral from start to finish. Um, it's from the time this person had died, they passed away on Saturday and it's currently Thursday. So I ended up meeting with them Monday, once again, just as a reminder, because family was out of town family was out of town and they wanted to make certain that everybody was in town. The visitation started on Wednesday and then we did the funeral and the burial today on Thursday. So there's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of phone calls, there's a lot of organization that falls into play those couple of days. Um, and this is just one service out of everything that was going on at the funeral home. But I hope that by kind of doing these little clips, it may be um, open some people's eyes as to the process that we go through and the phone calls and everything like that. I know it's hard because I can't really show us like getting a body prepared or, you know, different aspects like that. But once again, me talking about it hopefully will help some people understand the process from start to finish. So if you like this video, you can always give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos that I'm putting out in the future. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in my next video.